my work as a stylist helps to tell stories, be that the stories of fashion brands such as Chanel, Salon Setiem or Paul Smith, seasonal stories of their collections in campaigns or magazines such as Vogue, or personal stories of private clients and the clothes and the objects that surround them, and express your values, personality and lifestyle. And for a long time, my job as a stylist and creative director has been intertwined with that of photographers creating narratives, working for editorial shoots, portraits and campaigns, as well as my former role as fashion director for Art and Fashion Biannual Exit magazine, where I commissioned and worked with top art photographers from around the world, such as Todd Heido, Lena Shainus and Raymond Meeks. I'm Alexandra Alenska, and I've worked as a creative director and stylist for luxury brands, including Chanel Celine and Vanessa Bruno, as well as magazines, including Vogue and Harper's Bazaar and I've been featured in international press, including Forbes, Elle, The Sunday Times, and The Independent. I now help directors and leaders in midlife and beyond to rebalance that work, 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 busy, busy, busy lifestyle you've become accustomed to, because you know life's too short to stay in that career-driven comfort zone. I help you to redesign and restyle your life, especially at midlife with life-changing transitions, such as the breakup of relationship, divorce, menopause, or turning 40 and beyond. From your home and your wardrobe to your mind and social life, I help you with your stylish next chapter to step into your best life, because I know you're ready to rock life again. The relationship with photography, truth, and time feels endlessly intriguing. The tango of interwoven personal and professional narratives of the photographer and the subject. Some cultures believe that photography steals your soul and are terrified of cameras whilst old portraits of Russians and Eastern Europeans staring directly into the camera do indeed seem to expose their inner core. Photography has long documented events, both personal and private, and constructed realities as much as recording them from a specific viewpoint and aesthetic. Even so-called deadpan photography, devoid of visual trickery, of hyperbole, as curator Charlotte Cotton calls it. Likewise, images from American photographer Stephen Shaw, who photographed piles of American pancakes and zigzag cut melon on the road in American diners long before the craze for Instagram food snaps, had a distinctive light and strong graphic vision. The story of photography is also the story of technology. It's not just framing the world, it's framing the world and looking through a window through the lens of technology. Looking back at the early days of digital, we see naively pixelated images that record a moment in technological advancement as much as a gently blurred Kate Moss on an early digitally shot cover for British Vogue. We see 90s shoots in edgy magazines such as Dazed and Confused, where models' features are deliberately stretched out of proportion, a humorous long nose, Pinocchio style, for instance with the magic of Photoshop being explored in a way that seems naive to the modern viewer, with the power of cell phones and figure-changing apps at our fingertips. And every time that technology improves and that phone cameras are upgraded, we think we're seeing sharper and clearer images of the world than ever before, only to realise a few years later, retrospectively, that the lens through which we viewed the world a few years ago was the lens of the zeitgeist, with only a passing relationship to the truth of the moment. Photography seeks the decisive moment, as Breton called it, capturing not just the fleeting moment, but the essence of it. A photograph, after all, has a magical relationship with time, set as they are in the past, the present and the future. Photography is, to some extent, an intuitive act, being ready and having a feeling for what is to unfold. There's the moment of considering the image, predicting it if you like, even if that's done subconsciously, at the split second of prediction, of when someone will have their eyes open and be at their most beautiful smile, for instance, as you press the shutter. And of course, we don't always guess correctly. Witness images that each of us knows only too well, of friends, of family, of ourselves blinking, or with our eyes rolled back in our heads half-closed as if we're possessed, or a half-weird smile, half-gurning. The haunted look of Victorians with their sombre, stoic faces may to a modern viewer seem stern and severe, Yet perhaps the modern viewer would look equally tense having to hold still for a good length of time, aided only by a metal headrest bar that protrudes from the wall clutching the neck to ensure that you don't wobble even slightly, which would blur the image. But appearances are deceptive. It seems as if the two most searched for things on the internet today are pornography and cat videos. And while I can't comment on the Victorian penchant for kitties or otherwise, pornography they excelled at. 
at the same time as the British nation was cloaked in black, in patriotism to the death of King Albert, and in solidarity with Queen Victoria, at the same time as table legs, suggestive as they were, were being discreetly covered with long tablecloths, and at the same time as those stern, unsmiling portraits, was a booming trend in recording matters of the flesh. Portraits can never capture the complexity and delicious multidimensional nature of humans, though the most alluring images are those that captivate us with a certain je ne sais quoi that goes beyond a one-dimensional image. Photographers such as Walker Evans and Dorothea Lang of the Farm Administration Society in the 1940s that were sent out to the American Deep South to document the real lives and the poverty of the people there are hauntingly dignified. Evans' book entitled In Praise of Famous Men, referring to the very real people in desperate situations, is endlessly touching and a worthy revisit in these times of insta-fame or infamy. Similarly, August Sander's seminal work, People of the 20th Century, that he started in the 1920s, depicts people from all walks of life, giving butchers and artists the same dignity as government officials. Gillian Waring's famous 90s photographs, signs that say what you want them to say, and not signs that say what someone else wants you to say, comes to mind. Photographs of people from all walks of life holding signs describing how they're really feeling. The sharp businessman who holds a handwritten sign stating I'm desperate, or the uniformed police officer whose sign simply states help. All this makes one ponder as to what's hiding behind the white shirts and smart jackets of endless corporate headshots on LinkedIn. Appearances can indeed be deceptive, and a photograph is far from just a flat image. Of course, film images also had a relationship with time due to the nature of having film processed and printed, waiting for film images to be developed, each one precious. In these modern times with throwaway digital images and the endless click-clicking potential, it's easy to delete those shut-eyed grimacing images. Though actually, who has the time to dredge through their camera images stored on clouds somewhere in the metasphere? But in doing so, perhaps we're losing an element of humanity itself the truth of imperfection, or the real moment that was captured, that also took place alongside the real or staged happiness. And sometimes it's those in-between moments that are the most interesting, that capture a different kind of honesty. In working with luxury fashion brands and top fashion photographers on campaigns and images for magazines, I know that sometimes what I love the most isn't necessarily about the staged image that I thought that we were creating, it's about setting everything up as much as possible. The research and the mood boards and the hair and the makeup, the set, the clothes, the styling, the beauty, directing the model and then letting it unfold and searching for those in-between moments where the model drops their guard perhaps and gets into their own flow beyond the static poses that they've practiced. Just like in real life, isn't being in our flow where we are enjoying life and time seems to pass by so quickly while we're having fun the most beautifully meditative, creative, happy thing in the world? Then there's the time between the pressing of the button and the whir of the shutter, the physical time in which the light enters the camera and the image is taken. This may be sped up in today's cell phone world where everyone's a photographer, but it's there nonetheless. From that perspective, photography has long engaged in visual trickery and an intriguing relationship with the truth. Early photographs of London appear eerily calm if we are unaware of the long exposures that were needed to capture the images, whereby trotting horses and hordes of people have passed by the camera, all in an invisible blur to the modern viewer of the final image. Just as the lens is never neutral, photography is always a personal and political decision of sorts. Images are edited, cropped, lighting and aesthetics, no matter how apparently neutral, are always a consideration. Witness a certain criticism that emerged during the devastating events of September the 11th and the potential aestheticization of a hideously memorable event forever etched into the collective Western consciousness, not just for the unique and horrendous nature of the event, but likewise for the iconic images endlessly played on loop of planes devastatingly yet elegantly crashing through the towers in a silent slow motion, of the sunlight streaming through the dust. At the other end of the spectrum, fashion photography echoes the zeitgeist. In an interview, fashion photographer Nick Knight, known for his radical uses of technology, commented that today's photographers are image makers. 
the lighting setup and the click of the camera being only one component in the long process of constructing an image today. Be that professionally, via complex 3D cameras, retouching or image manipulation, or on a personal level, with apps and filters that can radically alter the very essence of the person captured, with cartoon-like eyes and flawless skin perhaps. Presenting less of a portrait of how somebody actually appears, be that under favourable conditions of lighting for instance, but of how a person wants to be perceived. Yet for all of their artifice, fashion photography, as much as selfie culture, reveals more than a vacant image. They speak of ideals of beauty, of ideas about gender and broader cultural trends. Fashion images, for all their fantasy, relate to reality, capturing not only models and clothes and makeup of the moment, but also reflecting the socio-economic and cultural beliefs of a place and time. Corinne Day's grungy images of the 90s, with skinny waif-like models located in council houses, wearing beat-up jeans and beaded couture gowns, offered a counterpoint to the strong supermodels and body-beautiful and tanned American girls of the 1980s, and echoed a 90s questioning of capitalism through a rejection of glamour and the yuppie excesses of the 1980s. Photography reveals truths and indulges in visual trickery. The history of photography is part of the history of art and technology, as much as humanity and our personal histories. It's also a great place to start an art collection. Whether we line our walls and picture frames with family portraits, old and new, or limited edition collector's pieces found at galleries and fairs such as Photo Paris, they all represent the passing of time as well as any memento mori Dutch masterpiece that skillfully depicts skulls, rotting fruit flowers, and other symbols of the fragility of life and impermanence of wealth in oil. I'm likewise reminded of photographer Craigie Horsfield, who famously burnt his negatives, rendering each piece as unique as an oil painting, the photograph itself being exposed to the ravages of time, just as we all are. I hope you've enjoyed my take on photography and time and truth, and maybe inspired to start an art collection of photography works. Thank you so much for watching. Merci. Au revoir. À la prochaine. Bye bye.